Alright, I know, I know. Who cares about the Detroit Pistons? The team was currently the second worst team in the league right now, at the time of this recording at least. Now, I don't blame you guys, cause even myself struggled to watch this team ever since Blake Griffin's 50 point game. But there is a player in the Pistons that does however manage to keep my eyes on watching this trash, I mean sorry, I mean this team. No it's not Jeremy Grant, no it's not Kate Cunningham, even though he's a pretty solid player, not gonna lie. And no it's not Isaiah Stewart, cause really I'm just waiting for his next rematch with LeBron. No, in this video I'm talking about Sadiq Bey. And I know you're probably wondering, who the f*** is Sadiq Bey? Look, in any NBA teams, trash or a super team level, there will always be a hidden gem within them. For example, Giannis on the 2013 and 14 season Bucks, who by the way finished the season with a record of like 15 to 67. Man, for f sakes, I don't even remember them being that bad. But my point is, is that we managed to see a gem within that team, which was a 60 overall rookie Giannis Antetokounmpo. And by the way, which I made a video about saying that he would be a future MVP in the league. And look at that, I wasn't wrong. So with my fortune telling the expertise, maybe it's just right for me to try and predict the future of Detroit's hidden gem. Now, let's get right into it. Hey everyone, it's Hooper's Corner, and today I'll be talking about, well, whatever that says in the title, I guess. Look, let's start off with who Sadiq Bey is, so here's a little background. Alright, Sadiq is a 22 year old 6 foot 7 sophomore small forward for the Pistons coming out of the Villanova College where he had a pretty great career in. For his sophomore year, he averaged 16 points per game along with just less than 5 rebounds and 3 assists per game. And can I just add that this guy was shooting 47% in the field and shooting 45% in the 3 point line during this sophomore year. He then declared for the 2020 NBA draft which is where he was drafted by the Brooklyn Nets at the 19th pick but who was then traded to the Detroit Pistons in a 3 team trade. I mean I guess he had a solid rookie season averaging 12 points per game shooting 40% in the field and 38% in the 3 point range. He managed to finish 4th in the race for the rookie of the year but I think we all knew that Lamelo had that in the bag that season. Right now Sadiq Bey is averaging 15 points per game, 2 assists per game and 6 rebounds per game. Look, I know the stats aren't really flashy, but remember, he's only in the second year and I can already see the potential he has. And it comes down to him wanting to get to that next level of his game, just like any other players. But the reason that made me want to make this video was the game he had against the defending champions, Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks. Sadiq Bey in this game had a scoring outburst as he went for a career high 34 points while shooting around 54% in the field, including going 8 from 13 on the 3 point line. Look, can I just mention again that this guy is 6 foot 7 but the way he shoots the ball is what interested me. I can watch this guy shoot the ball all day just because how smooth it looks, and it's especially surprising to see from a player at his height. If we look closely at his jump shot, you can see that he pretty much shoots it on the way up. Almost like the 3 point shooting guards like Steph Curry. Look, I said guards because guards usually tend to shoot the ball on the way up due to short height and may need more power to shoot the ball from the 3 point line, or over closing defenders. So Sadiq is a 6 foot 7 forward that shoots the ball on the way up with a quick release. Look at how quick he releases the ball right there. He seems to manage to release it even before the defender could get their hand up to contest the shot. This is an important advantage to examine as players in this height range of Sadiq usually releases a shot in the player's optimal release point. If you look at the players such as Kevin Durant, you can see that when they shoot the ball, they tend to hang in the air for quite some time before releasing it at their optimal release point. So why is Sadiq's quick release so important? It's because Sadiq doesn't have the height advantage that Kevin Durant has on defenders which makes it hard for defenders to block or contest his jump shots. So Sadiq's quick release can be used as an advantage for Sadiq to be able to shoot over defenders before they could even contest. As you can see from these clips that the closing defender struggles to contest his jump shots. This advantage right here has the potential of him becoming a deadly catch and shoot player which I think that what Detroit needs especially with another scorer like Kate who also loves to make plays for his team. Looking at the NBA advanced tracks in the catch and shoot situation. Detroit is currently sitting top 5 in 3 point attempts per game, sitting at 26 attempts per game. However though, they would only convert at an average of 8 3 pointers per game, so if we calculate that it would be around 24 points per game from the catch and shoot, which is around 85% of their average total catch and shoot points per game. So looking at these stats, you can see that Detroit would love to bring that numbers up, as they frequently end up in catch and shoot situations, and Sadiq could be the one of the key players to help improve that. I know his 3 point percentage is down right now at 33% compared to what he finished on his rookie season, but he still has the time to improve and develop a consistent jump shot with his already smooth mechanics, so really I wouldn't really stress much about it. Now let's get on to the defense. 
I think this part of the game is really one of the most important things to talk about when assessing a player. You know what they say, defense wins championships and any coaches would love a player they could rely on during defensive sets. Sadiq in my opinion was pretty solid on the defensive end during his rookie year last year. I feel like he exhibited positional intelligence and really used his size well in both offense and defense. The usual expectations for forwards in the defensive end is to be able to make the right decisions in terms of rotations around the rim in order to protect it. Forwards are also sometimes expected to be the second rim protectors during switches, especially when the center is forced to step up outside the paint. Look, I really feel like Sadiq is good at using his size, but I don't really see him being the greatest perimeter defender, not just yet at least. In my opinion, instead of being a defender that could stop ball handlers in the perimeter, I feel like Sadiq should be molding his defensive game similar to players like Robert Covington. If we look at Robert Covington's game on the defensive end, we can see that he makes the most impact during defensive rotations and deflections rather than stopping ball handlers in the perimeter. As we can see from the 8-year veteran, Covington has a knack for reading the defense well and know when to rotate to the paint to be the secondary rim protector. Robert Covington's defensive style was a highlight during his time with the Rockets as it played a major role for the Rockets' small ball approach then when they traded Clint Capella. As I said, forwards aren't really expected to be the player to stop the perimeter players and dodge around screens, so for Sadiq to adapt Robert Covington's defensive style, it would be a big part of Sadiq's improvement, really. If Sadiq manages to improve his numbers on the offensive end and improves his defense by adapting other great NBA defensive players' style, he could have a potential of being an elite 3 and D player that impacts the game on both ends on the floor. In my opinion, sometimes for a player to be a star, doesn't always need the player to have high per game averages, but rather the amount of impact the player has on the game. A great example of this is Draymond Green. Looking at his stats, he also doesn't have the most flashy per game averages, but it's what he brings to the game that is not counted in the stat sheet, and the reason why he deserves to be an NBA champion goes deeper than the numbers show. I really believe that Sadiq could be a Draymond Green with a better offensive game which is the reason I believe that Sadiq Bey could really be a future star in the making under our radar and could be a future threat against opposing teams in the league. That's it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and make sure to hit that thumbs up icon and subscribe if you like this video. Feel free to comment down as well on which other players we should cover that's currently being somewhat underappreciated due to being in either low market or low performing teams that you believe could be a star. Anyways, thank you guys and hope to see you guys again.